I make hits, not the public. I tell the DJs what to play. Understand? So it's oxygen time again, and for the first time in my life, I'm gonna cheat the whole campsite that smells like a fucking toilet thing, and I'll be staying in a hotel like a boss. I know some people say, well, you're missing the point, and blah, 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 but I'm delighted. I'm delighted I'll be out of the fucking mud, and it's not that I'm getting old and boring. It's just that, well, I've had enough of little fuckers who drink six cans of Dutch gold and think they're the biggest legends of the world and proceed to rape everyone else's weekend and ruin your fun. Case in point. Last year, myself and herself were walking back to the campsite after a spliffing good night of dancing. Barbara Streisand. And we came across a lad who was in a great deal of distress. He was balubas covered in fucking shit, and he said he'd been robbed. Now, here's the thing. I've got myself into a few dodgy scenarios at festivals over the years, so a little bit of me felt obliged to stop and see if I could help him in some way. <laughs> a decision I, well, kind of instantly regretted. He didn't know where his friends were, he'd lost his phone, and his wristband was nowhere to be seen. Oh, and for some unknown reason, he had the words DICKHEAD written on his forehead in big red writing. I did my civic duty and walked him through the sludge, empty cans and discarded hymens. Carefully standing in front of him and waving my bracelet clad arm like a gobshite to distract any security guards that approached. <sighs> the poor Egypt didn't know where his tent was, so after a bit of trial and error, we were able to figure out a general location where it had to be based on giant inflatables. God bless the giant inflatables. So he went off on his merry way. I'll be honest with you, I felt good. I felt good because this was my one good deed for the festival over and done with, and now I could get back to acting the prick and not feel bad at all. <laughs> The following night, the cold was beginning to kick in and there was a group of us huddled for comfort, drinking whiskey not only to beat the band, but kick the shite out of the band's instruments in an attempt to stop quivering like a fat bure on a vibraplate. Suddenly, I heard a very strange noise. Well, a noise stranger than the absolute cod shite that was being talked in our little domed quasi-Siberian mental asylum. Wait! We can't stop here. This is bad country. It went like this. short burst, like a snake with zero confidence hissing at a prey. I unzipped the door and stuck my head out, only to see little lost boy from the night before, pacing all over the side of my friend's tent. Lovely. I picked up a half empty can of cider and I pegged it at him and said something along the lines of, you sir, have some cheek. I helped you when you were down and this is how you repay the world by urinating over our lovely weekend home. But, you know, at least a thousand times less pleasant and with more fucks than a full series of South Park. Fuck you, Duffy! <sighs> to my surprise, the little prick didn't look even a tiny bit sorry and picked up the can I had just pegged at him with his piss-covered hands, took a nice old slurp of it and stumbled away into the darkness, shouting something like, Relax, sure, it's oxygen, hey. I wear the joints country, Caleb. It was at that exact moment in time I realised whoever wrote dickhead on his face was not a bad guy, but in fact a pillar of society who wanted to send out a warning to others. They could have wrote cunt, it's only four letters after all, but they went that extra mile and went for two words, which just goes to show how committed they were to their work. I applaud them for trying, and as I get set to pack my bags for another weekend of nonsense, I do so knowing that if I ever meet any lost souls clambering for assistance this time, I too will keep my head down and keep walking, because if it's one thing I've slowly learned over the years, it's that oxygen isn't a festival. It's three days of survival of the fittest. Not the best uh, way of looking at things, I know, but sure as a wise man once probably never said, once pissed on, twice shy.